Hello, what's up, everybody? Kia is here with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you the most important and useful combination key or keyboard shortcuts inside of Figma, which is going to have impact on the way you are working with this tool. Some of them you might be familiar with, some of them might be new to you as well. So get sure to watch this video until then. My name is Kia, and here is Akimo. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> One of the reasons that I'm making this video regarding the combination keys and keyboard shortcuts in the Figma is because I got one keyboard from Goblin Tech Keys, which has been customized for Figma users. So you can see the combination keys and shortcut indicators and cap of each key of this keyboard. This is not an advertisement. I did not get paid by them. Uh, they were so nice to just send their product to me. And I've been using this keyboard for last couple of weeks. And I'm going to share my review at the end of this video. So get sure to watch this video until the end. If you want to know how was my experience using this custom keyboard. Now without further ado, let's get started. The first category of keyboard shortcuts are the one that will help us to navigate through the menu inside the Figma. We can navigate between different panel. The very first shortcuts are the Alt plus one or Alt plus two. Uh, these two shortcuts will help us to switch between uh, basically the layer panel uh, and the asset panel. So if you use Alt plus two, you can switch to the asset panel. Then you can uh, see all the component and asset that you have in your design. Or you can use the Alt plus one to switch back to the layers panel. If you want to open your library, the team library that you added to your file, you can use the Alt three on your keyboard, which is opening the basically library panel. If you want to switch between the design and prototype tab or panel, you can use uh, Alt plus eight to open the design panel or use the Alt plus nine to switch back to prototype panel. So you can easily switch between these uh, panels that are very important in your design process. And if you want to open the uh, develop mode, uh, you can basically use combination key shift plus D, which is opening the dev mode. Another useful panel that we can use a lot in our design process is the actions panel, which you can find it down here, or you can use the combination key control K on your keyboard, which is opening the action menu. Here you can switch between the tab assets or plugins very easily. And these days we have a lot of functionalities hidden in this me menu, such as the uh, AI tools that you can find here. So you can open this action menu and then search for the things that you're looking for. And at the end, when you're in the design process and you have all the library with the components that you would like to use in your design, you can have access to that libraries. We are the shortcut that I told you Alt three, or you can use the shift a combination key to open your component list. And here search among the components that you have and add it to your design very quickly. The next group of the shortcuts are the one that will help us to add a new object, new element into our design, starting from F, which is going to pick up the frame tool. And then we can add the frame into our design file. Also, we can use the uh, presets of the uh, frames that we have here for a specific sizing that we would like to have. The other thing is section. If you want to make a new section and group a bunch of frame together, we can use combination key shift S to pick up the section uh, tool and then uh, drag our cursor around the element that we would like to group together and make our section. And we can add shapes uh, into our design by using the shortcut such as R for the rectangle, which is going to pick up the shape tool, rectangle tool, and you can add the shapes by dragging your cursor around and make the specific size you want. Of course, when you are making the uh, shapes and you are picking up the shape tool, such as the rectangle, if you hold the shift, you will make a shape with the uh, aspect ratio fixed on the uh, square aspect ratio. Or uh, for example, if you sh uh, hold the alt, you can see that uh, your uh, shape is going to get a scaled from center or the anchor point is going to be this in the center of the shape. Other shape that we can add to our design is the circle, which you can pick up the circle tool uh, by clicking on the O on the keyboard. And you can see that 
uh, the uh, shape tool is going to get activated and you can add a rectangle into your design. The other tool that you might use in order to add layers into your design is the text tool, which is very handy. So you can click on the T, which is a shortcut for a text and then you can type whatever you want. The next shortcut is when you click on the P, you can pick up the uh, pen tool, uh, which will help you to create different shapes and line using the point and basically this uh, handles, which is defining the angle of the curve that you are making. There is another tool which is working like a pen, which is basically the pencil. You can pick up the pencil using the shift P and then a uh, pencil is basically like a pen, but you can very freely make the lines that you would like to have in your design and you can see that how it works. You can, uh, you can decide the thickness of your shape or the lines that you made. The next group of the shortcuts are related to the one that are helping us to navigate in the design canvas here in the center. You know, if you hold the space key on the keyboard, you basically see this hand in the middle of the canvas, which if you do the left click on your mouse, you can basically move around in your design file, which is very easy. Of course, you can use this scroll button to go up and down horizontally, or you hold the shift to go left and right using the scroll uh, button in your mouse, or you can hold the control on your keyboard and then use the scroll button to zoom in and zoom out. But just imagine that you open the file and then you see nothing on the screen. Uh, from this I, uh, basically the section on top, you can open and you have a bunch of options, for example, zoom to fit, which is going to uh, zoom out or zoom in the, the canvas you have here, your viewport, uh, in a way that you can see all the objects on your screen, which is sometimes very handy. For example, uh, if I use the shift one, you can see that I see all the design things that I have in my screen in the viewport available. The other thing which is going to be very handy in order to navigate in your design is when, for example, you have something in your design. Let's imagine this uh, design of this page that I have. And uh, when I select an, an element inside this design, I can use Shift 2 uh, to bring that element that I selected into the viewport or focus on that one, which is very handy. So just imagine you have a lot of layers here and you would like to uh, select one of them and then you can use the combination key shift two uh, to zoom on that element. The next group of the shortcuts are related to customizing the text, which are very handy when you would like to quickly uh, change the appearance or uh, something in your text. The very first thing uh, is um, uh, the underline, how you can add underline, which you can use the control U, which is very simple, control U uh, uh, to add the underline. In the newest update of the Figma, of course, we have uh, a bunch of new features regarding the underline, which you can open basically the advanced text styling. And then here next to decoration, you have this arrow, which you click on that. You can have a control on the thickness and the style and a bunch of other stuff that will help you to create more customized underline for your design. Of course, similar to that, if you would like to add the strike through uh, to your text, you can use a combination key, control, shift, and X, which is going to add the strike through on your text. One of the very cool thing in the Figma is that we can add a link, external link, or even we can use uh, a link for a specific section of our design uh, into our text. For example, let's imagine here, I would like to add one link to it. I can select the text and then use the Control Shift U in order to open uh, this link uh, your, or URL uh, text input, which if I add something to it, for example, uh, www.google, uh, dot com can see that now this text has a link and if i click on that it will open the google in our browser you can do the same thing in a prototype uh, to open the external links interesting thing is that if for example if you want to make a button which is going to uh, send an email or contact some specific person you can of course add your uh, email here for example chemo at gmail.com and when the viewer click on this button or this text, 
um, the user can or the viewer can send an email uh, to this email that we put here as a link. Now let's continue by saying how we can have control on the size of the text. Of course, here in the design panel, we have the typography section. We can adjust the text size there, or we can use the combination key control shift and listen more sign to change the size using the keyboard. I'm not using this combination key so often because it's easier to use this visual UI, the user interface. However, it's still handy to know sometime if you want to accurately change the size of the uh, typography by two or three pixels. The other thing which is similar to this one is to adjust the weight of the, uh, the text, which you can use the control alt and then less than more sign to switch between different styling of your text. The next shortcut which is relevant to styling of a text is basically the, the letter spacing between each letter in the text, which you can have control by uh, basically using combination key alt and again less and more button, which is going to increase and reduce the uh, spacing between the letters. And if you want to control the line height, you can use Alt Shift and less and more a keyboard, which is now impacting the line height. Again, I'm not using this combination keys uh, because it's much more easier to use the user interface. And so often, it's easier to use a design panel than remembering the uh, shortcuts in the keyboard on the keyboard. The next category of the shortcuts are relevant to colors, uh, specifically for the shapes, text layers. Uh, the way that we can pick up a, a specific color from a shape that we have in a design or how we can remove uh, the background shapes or swap between background and outline or border uh, color. So just imagine if we want to pick up this uh, color that we have for this button and assign it to this text. I can easily select this text layer and use the color picker, uh, which you can pick it up by clicking on I on your keyboard, which is a shortcut for this thing, and then select the color that uh, you would like to assign to that text. In the new feature of the Figma, we will have this color picker with more advanced functionalities for example, uh, if you have any variable in your design that you would like to uh, pick up this color from that variable list, you can hold the shift, which I don't have any variables here. Uh, but then in that case, uh, you can assign the color that you have as a variable to your object that you selected. The other thing is that you can also switch between different standards of colors, for example, RGB or again back to a hexo uh, code. Uh, by just clicking on the tab when you're opening the color picker, which is very handy and cool. The other things that I would like to show you is that, for example, if I have this <coughs> design here and I would like to uh, swap between the borders of, let's imagine we don't have any border, let's add one border, maybe a black. Uh, if I want to swap the border color of this shape with the background color, I can use Shift X to very quickly swap this to color, which we have similar shortcut in Photoshop and another, uh, let's say, photo and graphic visual editors, which is going to swap the background, the foreground and background. Here is doing the same thing for border and the background fill color. Or if imagine you would like to remove this background color with the shortcut, the shortcut is going to be uh, alt and slash. This will remove the background uh, styling or background f uh, color. You can do that, of course, for the image as well. Image is also a background or the fill effect, which you can use the alt and the slash to remove that. The next category of our shortcuts are the one which are related to selecting items in our design, in our canvas. We can click on anything and select the items. If we have this kind of hierarchical layers structure, which you can see that we have a lot of deep items down there uh, in parent layers that we have. Uh, it's so hard to select a specific item. For example, if I want to select the $60, the price tag, I need to click three times to reach to the deep or the bottom uh, layer in this hierarchy. But if you hold the control on your keyboard, you can immediately see that you are able to select all the layers, all the uh, layers in the deepest 
level of the hierarchy by one click, which is very handy when it comes uh, to editing the specific text or a specific layer when you have a complex design. For example, if I want to change this 60, I hold the control and left click using the left click on the mouse uh, to select this item and then you can enter and then write down a specific thing you would like to have. The next shortcut is enter on the keyboard, which will help you to uh, get deeper into your selected layer for example here I select the section here if I use the enter on the keyboard you can see that I'm uh, selecting all the layers within or all the child layers within this layer and if I continue clicking on enter I'm going deeper and deeper uh, until I select all the uh, final layers which sometimes is very helpful um, I'm, I will show you maybe later in the next videos how I'm using this uh, specific particular uh, combination key or the shortcuts on the keyboard but for now just know it if you want to go deeper you can use the enter or if you want to come up you can or coming uh, basically in into parent layer you can use the uh, shift enter so enter goes deep and shift enter comes back uh, to parent layer if we have a bunch of layers and items in our design and we would like to group them together in order to build more complex relationship between these items, such as the resizing or spacing behi behavior. Uh, we can select this item and then use combination key control G to use grouping in order to basically add all the layers that we selected to one group, uh, as you can see here in the layer, or we can use frame to do that. So also don't forget that combination key control shift G is basically ungrouping the group that we made. Yeah, as I said, we can use also frames to group a bunch of items together, which is different than using a group itself. I have made one video in which I explain everything in detail. What is the difference between group, section and frame uh, and the importance of using frame instead of group in most of the uh, cases because it gives us possibility to use the auto layout uh, features. But in this case, just that you know, you can use also control alt G uh, which is the shortcut for making frame i will show you here right now the control alt g is doing something else in my pc uh, because it's a shortcut for another thing but you can see that it's going to select basically uh, it's going to group all the items within one frame also if you would like to make a frame and apply auto layout on that there is a combination key shift a which i'm using 100 times per day when i'm doing a design uh, and also if you have a very a difficult item that you don't want to get into making uh, auto layout and the layout itself in general you can use uh, this combination key which I forgot let me show you yeah control alt shift a which is going to suggest the uh, the layout structure and the auto layout itself control alt shift a which you can see that it made uh, this hierarchy in our design and the last shortcuts which are relevant to selecting and deselecting the items are the one that I'm going to tell you right now for example imagine that you have this item here or this element and you would like to hide it from your design so you can use combination key control shift and edge to hide on a specific item you can use the same combination key to bring it back uh, if you want to lock specific layers that no one can really touch it and, and by mistake change something that you don't want to change in your design you can lock that item by using Control shift l while you are selecting that layer so you can see also this lock icon next to the layer that you selected which is indicating that this layer has been locked next group of shortcuts are the one which will help us to copy paste items in different ways you, can, you know that if you would like to copy paste a specific layer you can use the combination key control c and then control v to copy that element within the parent layer that they exist this is one option very simple but this is not the only way that you can copy something and paste it let's imagine that i would like to copy this item here and then replace this item here on top with this one so the thing I can do is I can uh, use the com uh, combination key control C to copy this item. But then while I'm selecting this item on top here, I can use combination key control shift and R, which is going to replace that item 
with the item or element that we copied previously. The next copy paste shortcut is relevant to the times or cases that we would like to copy the style of a specific element and paste that style uh, to another element. Let's say, for example, here, the text that we have here has a different styling than this one. So we have this option to copy just the properties of this element. You can find it here uh, by right clicking on the layer that you selected. And here you can copy a thing in a different ways. For example, you can just copy the CSS or you can just copy something as a PNG uh, or you can just copy the properties that you can see also the shortcut here, Control Alt C. Uh, and if you want to paste only properties on something else, some other element, you can use the Control Alt V. So let's give it a try. If I use the combination Control Alt C, I'm copying only the properties and not the text within this layer or the layer itself. When I'm selecting this text layer, I can use Control Alt V to basically paste the properties or the styling of this text on this layer. I imagine you can do this for different elements. For example, this image that you can see here I can use Control alt c and then come here and select this frame and then use Control alt v to paste the styling of that layer on this one as well but the next point is that imagine if you want to copy a text which has some style and paste it in another text layer for example in this case you can see we have these two texts here two text layers if I want to copy this text and paste it uh, in this text layer on top, using the Control C and Control V combination key, you can see that th the text that we paste in the the top or the upper text layer is going to maintain its old uh, properties or old styling, which usually is not the case. We would like that we keep the properties or the styling of the text as it is and just paste the text. In that case, you can use in that case you can use the combination key Control Shift V to just paste the text without maintaining the text styles that it has previously. This is very helpful when it comes to a kind of working on the content and text without caring and or messing up with the style. And at the end, if you are done with your design and for any purpose you have to um, basically export a specific element in your design in a PNG um, or use it in another part of your design file, uh, again, as a PNG, what you can do is you can select the element or the layers that you would like to convert to the PNG and then use the Control Shift C to copy something, that element as a PNG, and use Control V to paste uh, that element as a PNG. You can see that now the things that we had before is assigned as a fill or as a background image to our shape here. There are a couple of other shortcuts that I don't want to group them in a specific grouping or categories. I'm just going to share with you right now. One of them is regarding the transformations. Um, when it comes, for example, if you would like to select something and then flip it in a horizontal or in the vertical axis, you can use, when while you're selecting, you can use the combination key shift H to basically flip it in the horizontal axis or a, a shift V to uh, do that in the vertical uh, axis or uh, direction. You can do, of course, this thing on every element. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, especially when it has the text in the layers. Uh, but it still is very, very cool uh, that you know this combination key. Sometimes when you're working in a visual element, it might be very helpful to be able to swap uh, or flip the elements left and right or top and bottom. We use the next shortcut when we would like to convert one element, one layer to a component. Let's imagine here in this case, I would like to take this design, this item and convert it to a component. I can use the combination key control uh, and Alt and K to make a new component out of this one. It's very, very common and useful a combination key. Now I can switch back to the asset list by using the combination key option or Alt and 2 on my keyboard or I can of course switch here uh, using the uh, UI uh, and make a new instance of this uh, component. We can use 
the combination key control alt b to deattach this uh, element or this instance of f from its own master component or uh, i usually do this because i want to get sure that uh, every element or every component that we used inside this one this component is going to get the attached from its own master component so we need to really get sure that all the layers nested in this one is going to also get the attached uh, i'm using the uh basically control or, uh, k to open the action menu and then i'm going to search for nested and i see this option the attach all nested instances this will the attach everything that you have as a uh, child layers within this uh, component and that was it these are all the combination key and uh, keyboard shortcuts that i use so often and i wanted to share with you as well but don't worry you don't have to remember and memorize all this thing uh, what you can do is you can click on this question mark which is basically the help and resources section and you open the keyboard shortcuts here you can have access to list of all the shortcuts uh, with their own categorization uh, plus you can try them and when you try something for example here shift p if i click on that uh, you can uh, basically see this macro animation which shows that you are uh, basically trying that combination key and more important is that knowing these combination keys are going to have impact on the way you're designing that's definitely a thing uh, but do not forget that majority of these functionalities are accessible via the user interface of the Figma. So if you don't know them, if you don't memorize them, it's, it's still okay. You can find them and it's kind of not going to make a big deal in the way you design. And now back to the topic that I started at the beginning of this video. Uh, I got this keyboard from a Goblin Tech Keys, um, which has the uh, basically shortcuts uh, indicator, indicator on top of each cap. So you know if you, for example, hold the shift key and click on S, you are going to open or pick up the section two, which is very, very nice if, would, if you would like to get familiar with the shortcuts uh, at the beginning. This will help you to warm up, kind of. This will help you to uh, practice uh, the shortcuts. Plus, plus this has a... A Figma custom appearance, which is very cool for the people who love the Figma so much. But I made a list of the things that are uh, kind of defining this product. Just after using this keyboard for a couple of weeks, uh, to just share my opinion and experience with you. The quality of the keyboard is decent. It's not the best keyboard that you're gonna get, but it is still fine. It has this mechanical mechanism so when you click on the keys uh, you hear this satisfying uh, kind of sounds uh, it has also rgb when you click you can see these lights rgb lights are uh, lightening uh, under the keys most importantly uh, it has a bluetooth so it's going to get connected to your pc very easily it has this dongle which you can connect to your uh, PC and it automatically going to start to work so you don't have to really set up a specific thing uh, There is no application at least I didn't get that deep into it if there is any software application which help us to customize the lighting or I don't know the Keys functionality. I didn't try that but the negative things which I'm not saying the negative But the things that I guess it can be improved are first of all the combination key and shortcut might change after each update uh, so if we have new features uh, that might have impact on the shortcuts, this will kind of lead to uh, the problem that this keyboard might not be up to date after a while when you're, we are purchasing it. This is the, one of the things. Um, and uh, the other thing is that none of these keys in the version that I got has a backlight. Uh, so at the night, usually it's so hard to work with it that you won't see uh, the letters on the keys if you don't have any other external lights. You can find the link to the Goblin Tech Keys uh, basically website in the description of this video. And that was it. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you learned something new. And if it was so, please don't forget to like this video, share this video with the other designers in your community and get sure to subscribe to my channel right now if you haven't done yet, which is 
not so late, no worries. Plus, I'm trying to build our community. Therefore, I made one Discord server, which you can join there. I'm still waiting for more people to join there in order to uh, release more activities there. So hope to see you there soon. And that was it. Let's learn together. See you in the next video. <laughs>